Yo, what is up guys, Ghost here, welcome back to another video, and today I want to take a look at some of the Steam reviews for Delta Force, and whether or not the game truly deserves the score that it currently has. So for me, Delta Force doesn't really do anything super original, it pretty much copies the Battlefield formula, it also copies the formula from games like Tarkov and other extraction shooters, but it still does what it does fairly well, and that's why I would in general give this game around a 7, maybe a 7.5 out of 10. It's a pretty decent game, but it's probably not going to win Game of the Year. However, if we go and take a look at the Steam reviews, I was surprised. I expected this game to have maybe a 70 to 80% positive review score, but what I found is that it actually has a mixed review score at the moment sitting at 58%. It has slightly increased since I looked at it yesterday, then it was down in the low 50s, but why is that? And I think this sort of stuff is important to go into because to leave a Steam review, you really don't have to have any knowledge of computer systems. You don't even have to really have any amount of time played in the game. Like if you have 0.1 hours, which equates to six minutes, you can leave a negative review on a game. So review bombing is definitely a thing. And I think it may well be happening a little bit to Delta Force here. Guys, before we jump in, as always, if you do enjoy the content here on the channel, make sure that you are subscribed. I'm going to continue to cover Delta Force, going to play around with it for as much as, well, I can be bothered to, I guess, until I get bored of the game. Definitely going to be making some guides on weapons and also the vehicles, which, from what I've seen so far, nobody seems to be able to fly them, except for me. That's not a boast. It's just the way it is. So stay tuned for all of that here on the channel. Okay, so let's hop over to Steam and take a look at the review section here. As I mentioned, the game at the moment has 57 positive reviews, and a lot of the top reviews here that you're going to see, which are based on how many likes those reviews get, are due to the anti-cheat being installed on your system, which works at a kernel level and is not removed when you uninstall the game. Now, is this really as big of a deal as people are making it out to be? So this guy here says, installs kernel level spyware, anti-cheat expert, which is usually abbreviated to ACE, seems more invasive and conflicts with easy anti-cheat as well, which is a common known anti-cheat system, which a lot of games use, which itself is also kernel level. ACE, even when this game was not running and was uninstalled and then the ACE service stopped, was interfering with my ability to open an EAC game. So what he's saying is he wasn't able to open a game that uses easy anti-cheat because the anti-cheat expert software that Delta Force uses was still left installed on his system. Now this was absolutely true when you uninstalled the game and I can tell you this from using their installer and not the Steam installer, this anti-cheat system was left, but for me, all I had to do was simply go to control panel and I could uninstall it from there. And there are many, many more negative reviews saying the same thing here. Kernel level anti-cheat, AKA spyware. I had to do this to delete it. So this guy had to jump through a bunch of hoops here to get it properly deleted. This guy here, Ducky says, Chinese kernel anti-cheat, no EU servers, Tboo battlefield maps, etc. The game installs kernel level anti-cheat without telling you. You just click the yes for the admin rights. After the game uninstalls, this game does not remove the kernel level anti-cheat. So first of all, let's just go over whether this is actually anything that you as a consumer should really be worried about. So what is the kernel level? Basically, being at the kernel level, for anybody who doesn't know, means having like the highest level of access to your system resources. And most cheat systems that are any good or worth their salt will also be working at the kernel level on your system. So in order to combat those cheats, the anti-cheats also have to do that. This is not the only anti-cheat system that works at the kernel level. This is not really anything strange or out of the ordinary. I believe this is simply a stereotype of China that they're spying on the people over in China and that now they want to spy on the rest of the world by installing an anti-cheat system on your rig and leaving it there unbeknownst to you. Personally, I don't really buy it. I don't really see why they would go to the lengths to do that. I just think they want to make a good game. They want to make as much money as they can from that game. And this has just been a little bit of an oversight by them. I'm not going to lie. When I first installed it via their installer, you uninstall and it just uninstalls the launcher and leaves the entire game on, my, on your system. So what I had to do was manually delete the Delta Force folder which of course left a ton of registry entries on my system relating to Delta Force that I'm never really going to get rid of until I do a fresh install on my PC of Windows and, and wipe my hard drives. 
And that's not good enough, but they are already taking steps to address this. So hopefully now, if you uninstall the game, it should also uninstall the anti-cheat expert software along with it. Like, I honestly think a large portion of these negative reviews here and why some of these are ranking so high up is just because the Steam review system is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it's great that consumers like me and you can give our thoughts on a game and we don't only have to base whether we want to buy a game or not on the critics and the people out there who may or may not be biased towards a certain product. But on the other side of things, this also means that somebody, like this guy, literally has 0.2 hours in the game. So this negative review is solely based on the fact that he uninstalled the game and it didn't uninstall the anti-cheat. It's nothing to do at all with how quality the game is, whether he had any fun in the game. And this has like thousands of upvotes at the moment, which is why it's sat at the top. And again, just to show you just how ridiculous the review system can be here, here's somebody that gave a positive review. They have 0.1 hours, six minutes of playing the game. And all they say here is, nobody will read my review, so I will eat one tablespoon of Tabasco for every like that this gets. And of course, it's gone and gotten a bunch of likes, and this one is ranking fairly high as well. Does it really serve the consumer's purpose of giving them feedback on whether it's a good game or not? No, it doesn't. And honestly, I really think that Steam need to do something about the reviews. Like, I don't want them to stifle who can leave a review, but I really think people need to go through some sort of checks and balances to make sure that what they're leaving there isn't uninformed nonsense. Because this kind of thing can, without a doubt, ruin games. Now, that's definitely not the only reason that people are giving down votes to the game. So, for example, this guy here says, Biggest industry plank game I have ever seen. Has almost nothing to do with the classic Delta Force games. There is going to be a remake of the first story. But other than that, it's Delta Force in name only. And, you know, I guess that sort of thing is like a fair review. He only has, again, 0.2 hours. So he's only played it for around 10 minutes, 12 minutes or so. But he's not wrong, right? It's probably not similar to the old Delta Force games. But then again, that's completely forgivable in my eyes because the old Delta Force games released literally decades ago and it's 2024 now. So in hindsight, does this game really deserve these negative Steam reviews and is the game worth installing? I definitely don't think that it deserves a 58% score. I think if we removed all of these kernel level anti-cheat system reviews with negative scores there, I think it would be more like around 70 to 80%, maybe 75%, pretty much the way I feel about the game. I'd give it like a 7.5 out of 10 at the moment. But again, this is also only an open beta. And I think so far for the quality of the game and the amount of content that we have in the game, especially considering that it's free to play, this is actually quite impressive. And Again, it's free, so unless you're really, really worried about kernel-level anti-cheat systems, I do recommend installing it, giving it a go, and um, just seeing what you think of it, right? Now, I will be giving you guys my full review of the game once I've sunken in a few more hours. I've played all of the tests of this game pretty much over the past couple of months or so, and I can already tell that a lot has changed with the open beta now if we compare it to the very first alpha. So I'm going to be going over all of that stuff. If you're somebody who didn't get your hands on an alpha key, you didn't have the chance to jump in, maybe you've seen the Steam reviews and you're like, ah, oh, I mean, this looks kind of mid. Do I really want to bother installing this? I'm going to go over all of that in a separate video, so make sure that you are subscribed, guys. Let me know in the comments, of course, how you've been getting on with the game. If you're already playing, let me know what you think about this whole scandal, if you want to call it that, with the anti-cheat system. I want to apologize for my voice as well. I am absolutely chock full of a cold at the moment, so apologies for that. But uh, otherwise, have a great day, guys, and I will see you all in the next video.